was a, um, a big question of the film because uh, it was a very small budget. It's maybe for a French uh, film, three millions of euro is a pretty small budget. It's a very light budget. And we, I really wanted to have a, a nuclear plant and we have had no money to build it again. <laughs> so my producer literally collapsed. And uh, it's not possible either to enter a nuclear plant with cameras and actors and crew because, and we should feel comfortable about this, it's like 24 hours a day and seven days a week. So we could visit them, but never film it too. And so we started to find all around the world if there was a nuclear plant that had uh, been built but never been in function. And we found one in Austria, actually. So that's why part of the film is shot in Austria, because they, they both, I mean, here you don't have nuclear industry, but in France it's pretty common. And in Austria, and it's, as you know, a big subject in Europe. So in Austria, they just built it. And then they decided to ask people if they wanted it, <laughs> which is very, very intelligent. And so, <laughs> and so they say no. So they had this big nuclear plant and they didn't know how to make it rentable to win money with it. And we could shoot inside. It was the perfect setup for us. Yeah, we actually do have power plants in Sweden. It's not a huge industry. But, yeah. um, <laughs> did you ever consider any other setting or was this your big dream or vision? But the nuclear plant, you mean? Yeah, I mean, if you ever considered any other field that was unknown. Than the nuclear industry? Oh, not yet. I'm <laughs> waiting uh, for another experience. Like, uh, no, no, I mean, it's not as if we, uh, well, the story with the, the, the nuclear uh, scenery just came because it made sense to me. It was not like a trip, like a Disneyland uh, travel. And especially like in the beginning with my DP, we were just like, Wow, what a place, it's so cool, and let's make a lot of shots that we never use. And it was really like the most uh, dangerous aspect of the project because it's so easy to become very uh, complacent about the place and the, the, the originality of the place. But the thing we wanted to say with my co-writer is that uh, there was this big analogy between the love feeling, a love encounter, and a contamination with radioactivity, which is pretty simple, and the film doesn't hide this transparent uh, metaphor when Lia kisses Raim and says, uh, so this is radioactivity, I really wanted to give the, the key of the film. And uh, so this world came into the film because we wanted to talk about love. And it happened that while talking about love, we had the chance to say something about French contemporary uh, society as well, and also to say something about uh, the working uh, aspect of people that is so important to me because I feel that uh, in cinema we always see people and they go to work but we never know what they do and sometimes I mean, it's such an important part of our existence so I really cared about what is changing in our bodies and our behaviors, the work that we chosen or not chosen in this case uh, this is only your second feature film, and you've managed to uh, hire uh, well-known French actors. How, how did that happen? I'm always, <laughs> I'm always very, um, how do you say, vexed and um, susceptible when they ask that, hey, maybe they wanted to work with me. I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> like if you ask people, ask me, like, how can you do to have those amazing like, They are amazing actors, of course. And I was not in a position of a superiority when I saw them because I made the first film which was very, such a, not a success in <laughs> France. And I mean it was a critical success, it was good enough to make, to allow me to make another film. And I, I thank France's uh, uh, opinion of cinema that allows us, even when it's a very, very bad uh, commercial uh, movement, to make a second one. It's still an art. So, thank you. <laughs> And uh, I really wanted to see Tahraim, and I had worked uh, with the asset before for my first film, so I knew her quite well. And we felt that we, uh, we felt that we made our first film together, even if she, I did not discover her. She was already an actress when I met her. But uh, so we had this strong relationship and this strong uh, uh, familiarity. So it was really easy working with her. 
And Darwin was really like the first person I wanted to meet for this film for a lot of reasons. He imagined a prophet, I don't know if you saw a prophet from Jacques Audiard, which is in jail. So literally this actor uh, just was born in cinema in jail and it was really part of what I wanted to say of those workers as well that are, think they are free because they are nomads but they are really like in a jail, an open air jail to me. And I really wanted, I knew that those two young actors were really rising stars. And when I say rising stars, it's because when I asked them to be in the film, they were sort of famous in France, but not bankable, for instance. I could not make the film with their names. It's just that I knew that they were uh, meant to have a, a good, uh, a good uh, destiny. And when I dumped a lot of my films, I'm like, okay, maybe the film, will, no one will like it but it will stay in DVDs because it's part of their filmography, you know? Sometimes I'm like, okay. it will stay, in the way. And when we went to Cannes Film Festival, both of them were uh, main actors of a bigger film than mine, a film in competition with a lot of budget, like confirmed to make the filmmakers. So I literally, like the process of casting was absolutely uh, true. Those actors were meant to be stars, and they became during like the Assez Tombeau de Pandor, which is quite uh, a small thing, amazing thing. And uh, I really wanted to see them kissing each other. <laughs> <laughs> Any other audience questions? Anybody wondering anything about the film just thought? Uh, oh, there were seven singles, at least seven singles at the end. Uh, did that, was that part of the end credits or was it part of the scene? Signals? Uh, signals, safety signals from the nuclear power. Uh, sirens. Yes. Ah, sirens. sirens, okay, sorry. Sorry. Yes, it was meant to be. If it was meant to be. Oh, it, was it part of, you did this, can you tell us about it? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'm sorry to be slow. Uh, yes, I think I wanted, an, I wanted at the end love to triumph. But because I have very weird emotions, a system of emotions that is not very easy, I could not resign for a happy ending. And I was like, oh, okay, they were together. But my idea of love and the idea of love that is carried on in the film is absolutely not an optimistic idea. <laughs> it's much more like a, a bar baroque motive of love. Like black love, uh, poisoned love, and so I wanted like the love to be threatened at the end. And so the sirens came, uh, and if you see my first film you can, uh, you will notice that I have no imagination because the first film ends on sirens as well. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, I, I guess, I, I'm too young to repeat myself. But, um, so I wanted like the seven sirens at the end to give uh, a clue of the threat that lays on them. That's one. I'm sorry, but we're so we can't carry on. I'm really sorry, time's up. Yeah, the next movie is going to start. I'm really sorry. Thank you.